Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope everybody's doing well and you're enjoying Starfield. So, if you don't like spoilers, you need to shut this off right now. Because we're going to talk about uh, a little bit of the game. I finally became Starborn. And uh, yeah, yeah, I want to talk about a little bit of the game. And then where Bethesda just absolutely failed on a really great game. So let's get into it. So essentially the game is good. I've really enjoyed it. It's got a lot of good missions. The atmospheres that they have provided in the world for you to explore are pretty awesome. I definitely enjoy that about it. So where did they fail miserably? Um, Obviously, I mean, they do have some issues with the game. There's a lot of quality of life improvements that can be made. So, I think, honestly, where they really failed, though, was the introductory missions and your introduction to the UI, your user interface. No matter what game that you go and play, you're going to have some sort of introductory missions and an introduction to the UI system. You see that scientist out in front of mass, staring at trees, sounds upset. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad, right? Right. Yeah, we hear you. But all games have that introductory. And honestly, I think where Bethesda failed is that when you're playing the introductory missions, the game really does just feel lacking. You know, the characters during those missions, they don't feel very in-depth. Your dialogue options are semi-decent. Um, but the characters, they feel really just kind of soulless. So, introductory missions, I would say, need a huge improvement. What they could have done, and this, this is just my opinion and take on this, obviously... And I'll, uh, for example, when I did the introduction to, you know, Starship uh, combat, I thought it was absolute garbage and trash. The ship combat was just completely lacking. And that was because of the introductory mission. You don't have your skills developed yet at that point. You know, obviously you're just starting a new game. And I think that it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths when you go into an introductory mission and they, it, they're not showing you anything. It doesn't seem like there's anything worth playing for because your first exposure to it is just absolute garbage ship combat. Uh, the same thing goes with the regular on-foot combat, human combat. Your character combat during the introductory it absolutely sucks and I think that they could have improved it by let's say you go out in the ship and then they have an experienced captain piloting the ship and they have all the skills and assets and attributes that would be really desirable later on in the game that way you can see these things in action, see what's available, and then they kind of just leave it and say, okay, well, once you develop your skills, you'll be able to do those things as well. And then they can teach you how to pilot it. Um, it was a lot like that with the combat, just, you know, your initial just on foot combat. It was the same problem. It just it feels empty, and there's nothing really there that's extremely desirable. And that has left a terrible taste in a lot of people's mouths. And I don't blame them. Uh, I Personally, I felt the same way. What I will tell you is the game does get good after you've played it for a little while. The bad part is, is that you shouldn't have to grind for 15 20 hours and force yourself to play the game you know it it should be one of them experiences where you're just oh man I can't wait till the next time I get some time and I can sit down and play 
and the game doesn't the introduction doesn't leave you with that sense you know and there's no desire because of the way they set it up and it feels very empty and I will tell you what the hell this is a massive world that they put you out in I mean there is so much to explore it has so much potential um, now that I have completed the game yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna play again and then I'll explore the aspects of you know building the outpost ship creation is a huge thing that I, I really enjoy doing same thing with uh, building yourself a settlement you know so I'm definitely going to explore that aspect of it uh, some quality of life improvements would be absolutely great so let's say you know I don't, I don't have a weapon because I once you complete the game you lose everything and they start you over on a new game isn't that cool so I got nothing um, but I was going to show you though is that there's no hotkey swap for your weapons and that absolutely sucks if you want to swap your weapon you have to open up your wheel and then go into it and it really does break the immersion of combat you know why in the hell they didn't do a just a, a quick swap on your weapon I have no clue no clue the other bitch that I have is that there's no local map so let's just back out a little bit they will show you the entire star system and then if you zoom in on your location it'll show you the ex you know the uh, local solar system that you're in which is really cool I appreciate that um, it'll show you the planet that you're on or the moon wherever you may be so now let's look at the surface map so this is my local area map that's pretty trash you know you walk into these big cities and I'm not saying that everybody's going to use that shut, shut, shut your mouth shut your mouth you're interrupting um, not everybody wants that local map or is going to use it but from what I see the vast majority of people are definitely complaining about it and I think it would be a really good quality of life add-on now I understand what Bethesda wants they want you to go out and explore the world and that's fine you know you should go out and explore it but once you've explored it it should open up those areas in a local map of what's there you know I mean you get for example the city in neon there's a ton of vendors all right now you have to remember which ones where or especially in early game if you're following the introductory missions you're going from location to location to location and you get introduced to these big cities where you have absolutely no clue where anything's at so a local map would definitely be a huge improvement um, the other big thing that I see a lot of people bitching about is creation engine I see people all the time saying you know oh well they use creation engine you know it's holding Bethesda back uh, yes and no from a programming aspect you know yeah you're not gonna get the the performance or the visual fidelity out of creation engine like you do some other other things you know like unreal um, the reason that they did do that is money <laughs> honestly um, the modding community you know it, it's a huge factor for Bethesda games they open source their code and that way it allows a lot of modders to do all kinds of really cool stuff 
and I'm looking forward to what some people are going to end up doing with their mods. I think that it's going to be pretty phenomenal. But the creation engine, it allows Bethesda to open source their stuff for the modding community. Because that is a huge aspect of all of their games. Um, I don't... I, I've used Unreal Engine 5 myself. But I don't know enough about it to honestly tell you... Could you open that up? And then, you know, have a modding community as well. I don't know. So I'm not going to act like I have a good answer for you right there. Unreal... It really is unreal. It's very impressive. And the fidelity that you can get out of that is just absolutely stellar. It's far beyond anything that this game's ever going to be. But with that being said, I don't know if they could have used another platform um, on the programming side to allow all the modders to access this stuff. So I can understand why they did that. The other bitch is all the loading screens. Well, it if you know, you know, Creation Engine or anything like that, it's it's very understandable if you know how it functions. So I'm not gonna knock them for that. It is a very modular system, which is why you have a loading screen going into another building because the. The general environment that they've created is so large, so expansive, and has so much stuff in it that if you made a, let's say, this building right in front of us, or this medical facility, I can, I can just show you real quick what I'm talking about. No, I'm not so we that. walk in here. Now, if this was a seamless transition, and then we go into this room. That would be a, a lot more strain on the system, okay? So they'd be really limited at how many locations like that that they could actually produce and then Welcome put the into the game. If you are injured or sick, you can Does it suck that you have to go through a loading screen just to get to this one tiny ass room where there's really nothing accessible except that doctor? Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. It, it is what it is, though. If they had every single room in this game completely accessible, and it was a seamless transition, the engine just won't support it. So I definitely understand why they did that. The other reason that they would do something like that is that little modular style of building and programming. If they have, this is great for the uh, quality assurance people too. So during testing, if they find that there is a bug or a glitch, then they know it's in that room. You know, they don't have to sit there and then go through all the code and try and figure out what is interacting in some sort of negative way. If it's isolated just to that room, then it's much easier to track down and then correct the issue but yeah we have completed it and now we can actually go through I'll start doing the missions exploring the lore aspect of it um, it'll be a lot more fun I think the second playthrough but I will tell you if you are getting frustrated with playing it keep grinding you know get the 20 25 hours you're really really gonna see that there is a whole hell of a lot but during your first playthrough I mean that's how I did it I uh, I did explore a ton of side missions shoot it, it gave me an achievement that I did over 50 side missions, something like that. And I kept going after that, so it wasn't a limiting factor. I, I tried to explore all aspects of the game just a little bit, and then uh, so, I say a little bit, 50 missions is a lot. 
but the amount of side missions that they have in the game I think is going to far exceed what I've already completed. So, obviously they're going to have more DLCs in the future, things like that. It is a good game, though. Is it just amazing and groundbreaking? No, I'm not going to say that it is, but it, it's a heck of a lot of fun. What I would recommend is getting through your first playthrough, follow that storyline, um, and then come back and enjoy it. You can play it different ways, however you want. But I, I will tell you, without trying to completely ruin it, is that when you get to those end missions depending on what choices that you make you're either going to be really really happy with the choice that you made or if you've created let's say a bunch of outposts and have your own massive fleet of ships you may be extremely disappointed to see what happens <laughs> depending on what choice that you make so with that being said, get out there, enjoy the game, explore the universe. There is a ton, ton of cool stuff to see and enjoy it. But that's my recommendation. I would go through, you know, follow that the main quest before you get too invested in anything else. And that way you can see what your options are and how the game kind of functions and plays through. Because remember, once you've completed it, game just starts right over. So, um, yeah, that's what I recommend you do. Or if you already have a character that has a ton of outposts and a huge fleet, I would start a, another character, do the mission line, see what happens. And uh, that'll dictate, you know, how much time and effort that you want to invest. So, just my two cents. But, you guys take care. Try and have a good day. And look at that. Looks like the sun may be coming up soon. But, uh, just enjoy the game. I mean, you don't have to sit there and... listen to all the negativity I, I posted some crap at first and uh, it was justifiable because the introductory missions are dog shit I'm not gonna lie I think that th that's where they failed they did an absolute trash job on the introductory missions it was extremely disappointing but once you get past that and then get into the main storyline and then out into the universe that you can explore freely it is a good game it's definitely something that's enjoyable so take care out there in the universe and be safe bye